My name is Ben Rubel, and I'm the Processing Archivist at Cornell University's Kiel Center for Labor Management, Documentation, and Archives, and my poster is on our ongoing collection survey, which is aimed towards informing a prioritized processing and reprocessing plan for the repository. The Kiel Center is an institution with no processing backlog, but plenty of technical debt. By no backlog, I mean that at Kiel, nearly all of our collections are housed in archival boxes, have stub records in the catalog, and many even have folder inventories or finding aids. While all of these collections are technically accessible to researchers, a fact I don't take for granted, a large portion of them don't meet the standards that we have today for physical processing, arrangement, or description. A high portion of our processed collections are what I would call minimally described and lack substantial arrangement or specific access points. Many of these collections have not been physically rehoused beyond reboxing, meaning they remain in their original acidic folders, paper clips, rubber bands, and all. Such work was the result of several decades of MPLP processing that, like many of our efforts, solved one set of problems while creating another. By this I mean that in order to have no backlog, processing decisions were made by past colleagues that resulted in poor quality descriptions and physical housing. But it's that very lack of backlog that gives us the bandwidth at Kiel to even consider undertaking a reparative project of this sort. So, as part of our efforts towards reparative description and redescription more broadly, I was tasked with creating a processing plan that would identify these underprocessed collections and provide metrics to guide us as we begin to remediate some of these problematic collections. While many of our collections require attention, not all do and some are worse offenders than others. So where to start? At the earliest stage of planning the survey, the need to limit the scope of the project became apparent. At Kiel, most of our collections are delineated by format, so for our first pass, we will survey manuscript collections, setting aside audiovisual, photograph, microfilm, and memorabilia collections for a future project. Next, we decided on three types of collections among the many underprocessed that are highest priority and in need of identification. The first type is collections that document the experiences of marginalized people who are not visible in our legacy descriptions. The second type is collections of high research value that require description or redescription to be accessible to researchers. And the third type is collections that require significant preservation or conservation attention. Collections that meet all or some of these conditions are considered highest priority for processing, so the survey was designed to reflect that. One thorny issue we encountered was the definition of research value. We used two separate metrics to define this. The first was past reference request data from the last several years, pictured here. The second metric was collecting strengths and researcher interests, which you can see here, adapted into a decision matrix. These two areas are meant to balance each other out, as past usage data often directs us to higher usage collections, which are often those that are already better described and more accessible. By balancing this data with the projection of how popular a given collection might be if it was better described and more findable, we have a rough idea of what the research value of a collection is. So what does my process actually look like for evaluating collections? I created a survey instrument with Airtable that incorporates ratings for the criteria already mentioned, as well as for overall arrangement, description, and common conservation concerns. It consists of two forms, which I call the pre-inspection and inspection forms. The pre-inspection form is used to enter basic information about a collection, including extent and level of restriction. The inspection form requires entering criteria that can usually only be ascertained by physically inspecting a collection. I assigned a rating to each field, which Airtable then sums and translates into a total description score, a total conservation score, and a combined numerical score out of 100. Collections with higher total ratings are a higher priority for processing, while lower ratings are less critical or may not need reprocessing at all. I tested and refined this instrument on a pilot sample of 30 collections. Through the pilot project, I was able to adjust the weighting of criteria and account for some of the indeterminate nature of the process. For instance, after surveying collections in exceptionally poor physical condition, I shifted the weighting of the survey to emphasize certain conservation risks over other criteria. Though this may result in lower research value material scoring higher for reprocessing priority, we have a responsibility to ensure the physical care of our materials first and foremost. 
With the survey instrument completed and workflows established, we are ready to begin the full survey this year. Thanks for watching. I welcome any feedback or suggestions and can be reached at the email on the screen.